I say in Rich Dad Poor Dad, savers are losers because they save this. If you save this, now if you save this, what is this here? Thirty dollars. Yeah. Well, what 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 silver? Kind of, it's a silver round, just a generic silver. One ounce piece. silver. It's a buffalo. Yeah. So I, I, I call I call up Jim and I want buffaloes. You know, so he knows what I'm talking about. So there's, there's different goofy kind of coins out there, but I'd rather save this because this will be here ten thousand years from now. This won't. You know, you can pass it on for generation to generation to generation. I'll be surprised if that paper dollar is here even ten years from now. I doubt it. Yeah. So anyway, we're we're in very serious serious trouble here, and uh, this is the hottest subject going for years. I've been saying buy silver because everybody can afford silver. You know, when I, when I offer them this for three bucks, they went well, nuts. Went, why would I buy that? Because they'd rather have this. That's the lesson. I'm one of the few people who absolutely despise cash for buying gold. And you'd think just the opposite, that I couldn't wait to get cash. But banks don't want it. Try and deposit twenty dollars or $50,000 in cash. They'll turn you away and say, well, we've got to do this, that, and the other. And uh, we've got to file this form, and we've got to do that. Hey, I, I would rather have a bank wire than cash anytime. But you know what else? You know, I'm thinking down the road. Let's say I acquire a million or $2 million in cash that the banks don't want to take. When this currency is repudiated, I'm going to be stuck. Just like the people in Germany were twice in the 20th century that the, the, they were hauling wheelbarrows full of uh, Deutschmarks for a basket of groceries. And, and that's and fake money brought Hitler to power. Every time there's fake money, tyrants rise up because people know something is wrong. And I've talked to people all the time that have that are multimillionaires. They sold their business. They did this, that, and the other, and it came into all this cash. It's sitting in the bank, and I said, "Well, you think I should buy some gold with some of this?" And I said, "Well, you know what they're doing—the dollar. You know that they keep print, printing them. They can't print gold. Now, you tell me how much you can afford to lose of all that money sitting in the bank, and I would say leave that there and get the rest of it in gold. It's a bigger risk having paper money." It's a guarantee. It's a guaranteed loss. And, and eventually, these are going to be worthless. And we're in the 51st year of fiat money when Nixon closed the gold window. A currency has never lasted more than 50 years until now. And we're in year 51. Look what they've done in Venezuela. Become, they were one of the richest countries in, the, uh, in South America and, and actually the Western Hemisphere. Look what they've done to Argentina. Look what they've done in Cuba. Look what they've done in Mexico. The same exact economic principles that they broke there. We're yeah, doing the same thing here. Some, somebody asked me once, how many, Charles, how many paper currencies have gone uh, broke, have gone <laughs> worthless over time? And the answer is all, all of them. All of them. And the, and the ones that the ones that people still hold are only on their way. They just haven't arrived at their final destination yet. It's like I'm 17 years old in 1964 going, something's wrong here. And that's <laughs> Gresham's law. And I think that's one of the reasons I'm a rich person is I know real from fake. <laughs> and then, so when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard in 71, I didn't really know what that meant, but the first course, I, this was, I was in Vietnam in 73, I came back. 74, they made this legal. Remember that? It was illegal. So I had to smuggle that damn Kruger. I was in Hong Kong at the bottom of Kruger Rand, <laughs> South African Kruger Rand in Hong Kong. I had to smuggle it into the country. Why was that? In, it was in 74. Yeah. yeah, because it was Ill illegal to own in bullion form. And well, in 73, I brought it in. Yeah, yeah, but it, it was a felony. It was a felony. They they could put you in prison for 10 years and charge you $10,000 fine. They made it a felony for Americans, free people, to own monetary gold and silver. Yeah. Or gold, anyway. It was, it was a felony. How they, was it dangerous? Was it going to blow up? Was it nuclear contamination? Was it kill your neighbors with poison? What what was wrong? Well, it was, of course, you know the answer. It's always the same answer. The government grabs all the gold because it wants it for itself, so you can't be allowed to have any. And this was 850. What What is this today? Uh, 2050. So why would you save this trash? <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I'm saying here. It's fake. How about that, to sum it up? That's fake. It's a trick. This is the biggest reason you want to own gold. Because our pensions, you know, as you keep raising interest rates, our 401ks are going down. 
But not only this, it's my, my book wrote with Ed, Ed Sedell. It's our pensions are broke. So it's the firefighters, police officers, school teachers, their pensions are gone. So the Fed's going to have to print. That's my that's my whole summation. Well, and what's what's crazy about it too is that you get your statement online every month, and I says, "Oh my God, look, I have five hundred thousand dollars in my pension plan. Boy, that's going to last me till um, the year uh, twenty fifty. It's not going to. The dollar's not going to be there first of all, and the pensions are gone too. But gold will be there this forever. Will be here. This is God's money. I mean, they, they we used to have money for about five thousand years." But God put it here on the earth. When you read the stories about all the Spanish ships that have sunk over yeah. the years coming across the Atlantic and the explorers go down there, they're not going down there looking for the currency of the realm of the day and see if the paper survived. They're going down there looking for the gold. They're going yeah. there looking for the silver. And they find it. And what's amazing is that if this bar had been in the bottom of the ocean for 500 years, it'll still be in this pristine condition. Right. It doesn't rust. It doesn't erode. It will do the same thing now, 500 years later. Ron Paul, he says the difference between us, if, if a Spanish ship went down with gold, if a Spanish ship went down with dollars, people would stop diving for dollars. <laughs> <laughs> they still dive for gold. And uh, it's, it's kind of a funny thing, but it's sad. But another thing too is I, um, I had a pile of extra silver I, I bought from you. And I was handing them out as Christmas gifts. You know, it was 25, 30 bucks, let's say. And so one woman had four kids. I said, give each one of your children one of them. You know, one silver coin. Said, well, but I said, it'll be there when they graduate from high school. No, they'll probably spend that. I said, yeah, they probably will. But that's the problem. I'd rather I save this. I say, rich dad, poor dad, savers are losers because they save this. 